Today, what I'm going to do is show a bit of the evolutionary process that I undertook when I uh, was given the task of joining the team to come up with the themes, potential themes of what the new mini could look like, being that it hadn't changed for over 40 years up until 99. What could that mini have looked like through the ages if it had changed every 10 years? And with the mini, it was very tricky because we had to still uh, maintain that identity, that original feeling of the mini, yet it had to look much more advanced. In order to maintain that look of the Mini, yet modify it and evolutionize it to the future, I had to keep a few elements that were very characteristic of the original. So what I tried to do with the concept of the new Mini was to keep this feeling of a very compact car on the outside by reducing the front overhang and the rear overhang. And if you studied the proportions of the Mini from a side view aspect, you would realize it was actually sort of like a three-tiered cake. You would have the roof, you would have the glass, and the body was a third element. So in my view, it's pretty much like a three-tiered cake. One important element on the original Mini was a weld flange. It means two panels coming together, and typically those panels that come together are joined from behind, so you don't see the joint. Because it was a, such a strong design element, I wanted to emphasize that. So I kept that line on the car. That meant that the hood of the car, the hood of the Mini, became what we call a clamshell bonnet. In other words, the hood is not just a single piece located on the front of the car, but rather it is uh, the hood and the fenders included. So it became a, a quite a large piece of expansive metal that had to be pressed that in turn became what we call the clamshell bonnet of the Mini. In the new age of aerodynamics, it's important to rake elements backwards or at least lean them backwards to a certain degree. So obviously we want to keep the round headlights and lean them back. So that gave us this impression here where the headlights looked a little bit more racier, a little bit more sporty, more dynamic. The Mini, as I said, I tried to give it a bulldog stance. So the upper half of the grille of the Mini, and we know that the Mini had a grille that from the front view very much was uh, sort of this shape here with, of course, the veins in the middle. And what I decided to do to maintain the Bulldog sort of influence was to split it. So in other words, take that area of the Mini. This zone here would become the top part mounted into the bonnet. And the lower part of the of the uh, grill would become located in the bottom part of the bumper, which had a sort of protruding jaw to mimic the jawbone of bulldogs. So we all know bulldogs have sort of an underbite, very distinctive. And, and by doing that to the mini, it became recognizable as as very distinctly influenced by uh, another British icon. So that became, I would say, the, the face of the Mini. Now the bonnet, the clamshell bonnet was very soft and flowing. We had what we call the power dome in the middle of the bonnet to allow the engine to have enough clearance. We had very swelling, almost thigh-like designs over the headlight area. So the face of the Mini, the front of the Mini started to evolve in such a way that that it was very identifiable, very unique. When you line up all the lines of the car that are heading somewhere, they would all lead to the same vanishing point. Now, if I extended these lines together, they would all coincide with one point above here. That would be the vanishing point. But what that gives you is a sense of proportion and stability. I think that's one of the secrets of iconic design is getting the proportions right. There's a lot of, uh, truth i think you can say to the law golden law of proportions which helps us quite a bit when we're designing things that we want them to have a almost a timeless feel it's hard to age a product that basically is inspired by by nature's proportions i think another thing that we have to remember is that from the front view this curvaceousness of the mini of the bonnet was important to give it a bit of sensuality 
Obviously in the old days, less curvature in the panels of the car made it much easier to build. And as we've learned ways to construct cars in more modern methods, we've, we've come up with ways to bend metal such that we can get curves and surfaces that really start to become a lot more enjoyable to look at and to wash by hand, obviously. <laughs> Uh, and it was a, a great interpretation of what the new Mini could look like in 99. There are a myriad of possibilities of, of what the Mini could have been, but I think the one that did come out nailed it very well in the sense of uh, what a modern Mini would look like. So if we do this and we do that, we're starting to get an impression of what the Mini looks like from behind. And the reason I'm doing this is because there are two strong elements that identify this car visually from, I'd say from any other car on the road today even. And if you don't believe me, just try to spot a car on the road that does have it, is the placement of the taillights of the Mini. When I designed the car, this was impossible to actually manufacture. Typically, if you have taillights placed on the back of the light, the easiest solution is to integrate a slot cut out in the back where the lights become in this area here, I would say. And they almost always line up with the shut line of the tailgate or of the, the, the boot in the back. To actually go away from that and to place the lights within the rear fender, so to I isolate them like an island, that is not easy to do. What it does, why, why it's important is it widens the rear of the car, the impression of the car. And because the Mini is supposed to have that bulldog image or bulldog feeling to it, you want the car to look low and wide. That is just a, a typical dynamic stance. And I was highly determined, I guess, to say the, to place those lights in those positions. With the Mini, what I wanted to do was achieve that sort of very athletic look from the back. So what I did was when the side glass, this area here, comes down into the body of the car, I've actually built shoulders, wide shoulders, into this area right here of the car. As you go through here on the side of the car, the body, you'll see that it doesn't maintain flushness as most cars do through this section here. It comes to here and suddenly the shoulders widen out in in this way here and so when you're looking at the car from the rear view you have this impression that the car is actually wider than it is that gives it quite a bit of presence on the road it gives it quite a bit of sta uh, dynamic stance and, and strength and that is one little trick that has helped to make the mini stand out over its competitors as a designer you're going to be pushing the budgets to the limit you're going to be pushing the time limits and the scale of timing schedules to the, to the limit, that, that is not uh, appreciated by anybody else on the development team. But what they all do realize is that design matters, design sells the product. In this day and age, just about any product on, uh, available has is, 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 is got an inherent uh, quality value to it. Nobody buys junk anymore. Everybody expects the product that they're buying to work and to work well. And uh, in that regard, I think design has become even more important than ever now because that is oftentimes the, the decision uh, towards buying one product or another. So we're looking towards design as being uh, the probably most important selling point of a vehicle nowadays. But I would have to say that the Mini definitely is one of the highlights of my career. I'm obviously very proud of it. I consider myself extremely fortunate to have been in the right place at the right time to develop it to a stage now where hopefully one day it becomes a future icon. So there you have it. That's how I designed the 21st Century Mini.